Yo, 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 we are going live on Instagram with this video for my awareness documentation. And this is September 1st of 2018 and I am going to cover the topic of what it takes to be happy. Now, a lot of you may think it takes a whole lot to absorb yourself into this space and really be fulfilled. What's up? How's it going, Gwen? But to really be happy, is to be content with yourself. And I'm not gonna bullshit you. The answer is to stop accepting shit answers. That's my life story. That's what I am composed of. All of the terrible experiences of accepting where I am for what I'm worth less than myself. And honestly put, it's going to be, if you have the knowledge to execute and change your life, then that's exactly what you have to do. And if you don't, then you're not going to be happy, you're not gonna be content, and you're not going to be fulfilled. So, recently, God spoke to me, and yes, God's coming up in this conversation, God spoke to me and he told me that I had to balance my life out by doing exercise at some part throughout my day. And because I did that, I started swimming, I started doing martial arts, I started doing running just a little bit somewhere in my morning that opened up the possibility for me to be able to have more freedom to be able to express myself. So where I didn't have that, I ended up not being focused, I ended up not being disciplined. There was a lack of traction in my emotional, my mental, my physical, my spiritual health and because of that. I wasn't able to stay put and, and focus on my duties throughout the day to be able to help serve people. I would get up and go walk somewhere else and start doing other things that would distract myself from my attention. So you have to have a definiteness of purpose in what you're here to do. You know, I'm here to serve for a greater cause. I'm here to be a beacon of hope for the world. And each of you are an integral part of lighting my life so that I can be able to touch others too. So, part of my goal is to create a multicultural experience and to be able to tie in people and be able to educate them, speak. And I've had a lot of people tell me that I am great at being able to inspire people and get to the heart of what's going on in that connection. And if you hear something that you're good at multiple times, it must make sense that you would go and pursue that, right? That's the only answer. So if somebody's telling you you're good at this, you're good at this, and you're good at this, those are your three talents. And you wanna be able to go and pursue that and try and use that to be able to execute upon that. And if you're really good at something, you can really become passionate about that. So it's very simple. Follow your gifts, your talents, and your abilities, actualize them, and that potential that you can then gain through honing that skill, something that you're uniquely gifted at. And then once you've done that, throughout that whole time, you're gonna be serving people. Now you have to actualize that potential by getting it to the most people that you possibly can. And that, my friends, is the definition of greatness. That is what Lewis Howes came up with as the definition of greatness, and he's got the School of Greatness podcast. So if you have something unique that you're good at, then go and use it. So for me, this is the first place where I ever did an awareness documentation, so it's kind of special. And I listed out my five talents, my five gifts, okay? And I'll say it again. That would be martial arts number one, which is a bit locked away because my body's not very healthy. My spine is out of location, so everything else is out of alignment. Number two, speech. Number three, healing, which is tied into that speech and how I connect with people. Number four is being able to have more spiritual awareness and connecting with animals and God and people to a new level. Um, number five is leadership, which is all-encompassing. It gives me the energy. It gives me the enthusiasm. It allows me to connect with people on a much broader basis and understand them. And I've had to go through a lot of shit in my life, believe me. 
a lot of struggles, which allows me to understand from looking at other people who have been through something similar to me, I can be able to relate and understand where it is that they are in their level of self-awareness. Now, those people who are above me, I'm sure they have the same perception of me and where I'm at. So somebody that's constantly searching for their purpose and they're like, oh, I got to go and do all these different things. I know I am trying to be truthful. I'm trying to be able to be genuine in who I am. And if you live in this truth, then you can really abide in doing well in everything you do. That person's at the start of their whole venture because they're searching for their purpose. And if you miss that foundation, then everything after that is going to be a bit more difficult to acquire. So you have to have a certain direction that you're going in. To be able to acquire that, you know, God puts you in this world to be able to be aligned in helping people to your greatest abilities. He wants you to be successful. And I'm sure he gave you a talent, at least one, to be able to share with the world. He's blessed you. Now, go out and use that for greater capability of serving others. When I say that you have to stop accepting shit answers, it's because I allowed other people to press their expectations upon me. And I proved myself incapable of being able to express myself. So much so that I got really, really sick. Like I was going through college, I was doing things, trying to take business classes so I could own my uncle's drywall company. Now this wasn't something of my own accord, it's not something that I wanted to do. I gained experience in the field and it wasn't something that was truly helpful for what I wanted to do. So I was also being badgered and attacked by other people around me and I wasn't able to express my own emotions. So that showed up in my body. So much so that I had a massive red beard that was like a rash. The skin was peeling and it ended up being like a perioral dermatitis, which is dermatitis skin condition of the mouth. And it was gross. My body was somatically projecting that you didn't have true freedom in being able to express yourself. So I had to get myself out of an environment that was pressing too many expectations upon me and not allowing me to have my own accordance of my own will. So you have to be tied in with your emotions and your own responsibility for being able to take care of that. If you're not being fully independent in what you're doing, then it becomes really hard to be able to sympathize with others because you can't control yourself. And leadership really starts with learning how to follow. Now you don't necessarily have to follow everybody else who's doing better, but what you do have to follow through with is your commitment to the dedication that you make in making a decision. If you follow your own lead, then you're a leader, and then you can be able to carry forward and pick the bigger things up. Because sometimes you have to lower yourself to pick bigger things up. You're not always gonna be at the top, Great leaders, I'm sure, do normal responsibilities. They do the dirty work. They've lived it already. It doesn't mean they won't lower themselves to pick bigger things up and sympathize with these other people. If you really want to be able to understand how to control your life, then you have to empathize with other people because we're in the people business. We're in society with other people together. We're in community. And you disregard any of these elements, then you're going to disregard your own happiness. I mean... How content are we in community just being on our own, right? I mean, if you were to think of this whole world as massive ants in a colony and at the scale of the universe and planet Earth, we're puny. And the only way we can really be able to create a difference and impact is to be able to work together. Alone, we're nothing, but together we're strong. An ant can carry 10 times its own weight. Imagine 100 ants, okay? It's very simple. I think too many people get way too complex about these simple things. And it's not having expectations of others and, and just being able to give and provide free value without wanting anything from somebody else, right? It's, 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 it's taking away from your ability to serve when you're asking for something in return I mean, the world does amazing things. This whole world is made up of energy. 
so the energy that you put out into this space called the field is going to be received by somebody across the world. Now, if you want to be in harmony, then you want to be able to connect with positive-minded people. So your environment is going to determine your circumstances. Your environment is actually stronger than willpower. Those are what's considered external forces. Internal is of the self, what drives you internally. And you can only go so far on your own without having some sort of guidance, some sort of emotional support, somebody to be able to help you in achieving that next level impact. So I have just a couple friends who are close to me in being able to do that. And every once in a while, they check in with me like, dude, you know, you need to keep your boat afloat, man. You know, I notice you're trying to lift up the sail and get to this other island that's your destination. But it doesn't seem to me like from what you've told me, you know, you have holes in your boat. You got to patch those first, man. So you have to work on on dealing with yourself before you can help somebody else and lead for their wealth right i think a lot of people lack self-discovery and a lot of people lack curiosity you know when we start asking the right questions in life that gives the opening for imagination when we've given life to that imagination by asking those questions we start to answer or get new problems in life. And those problems that they, we then gave life to can then be solved through creating creativity, which is new solutions for those problems. So it all starts with asking the right questions and being responsible for your own wellness, your own being, by asking those questions, obtaining the answer, and then following through with your commitment. If you continue to let yourself down and you bring yourself to the ground over and over again, you don't build a structure from the first level and have it be leaning like this as a tower and then start building it this way to balance it out. It just doesn't make sense. So you got to start with the right foundation in being able to achieve what it is exactly that you want to do. I mean, these, this is even listed in the Bible, right? Foundation built on sand that's unsturdy will end up falling apart so it all starts with asking the right questions for yourself and not neglecting your own mental health by accepting shit answers ones that are not going to help you in developing and improving upon your current situation so with that curiosity you're bringing in that imagination and creativity to be able to start deploying new solutions in your life. And I think too many people hold themselves back from being able to learn new things. So what that ends up doing, because they close themselves off from the rest of the world, is they become ignorant. And they'd rather sit in their ignorance and think that they're right rather than being open in a growth mindset. That means improving. That means having an improving mentality. Now this is a massive dilemma that you will see in time and people will be more inclined to be ignorant rather than be willing to learn and improve. So when you try and prove yourself as that authority, as that person who's understanding, you no longer want to be able to represent yourself as a person who is receptive of other people's answers, which therefore stops you from being able to communicate and connect. Now, these ignorant people start becoming fearful of connecting with other people and accepting their answers, accepting new information to be able to help them improve. So they're proving themselves. And that fear when you leave that unchecked, ends up creating resentment. So they resent those who they fear. And with that, when you keep that resentment unchecked, it then turns into hatred. And that hatred, when left unchecked, then breeds destruction. So you destroy those things that you fear. 
and that all could have been avoided if only you had not been ignorant. So this leads into the topic of men will be lovers of self. And this is going to be a massive problem as time goes by and the world continues to change and progress. People are going to live in idolatry. Social media is going to have people stand on a pedestal. It's going to be a really tough world and we're going to have to accept it. But the best you can do is tune into yourself and your own mental health. Listen to yourself and listen to others. But you have to understand where that advice is coming from. Have they experienced what they're talking about? Where are they on this status? What have they been able to accomplish? Now for me, I haven't accomplished all that much financially. But this past year, after not having a voice, to being able to connect with thousands of people across the world and get a better understanding for myself, my own message, and connecting and learning what exactly my talents are, my abilities, and trying to actualize that potential by sharing it with the most people possible, I think that's a huge improvement. And I'm doing these awareness documentations to be able to speak to myself, talk about my story, talk about the new goals that I have, the vulnerabilities and those challenges that I'm improving upon, and how that ties into the development of my self-awareness and the awareness of the rest of the world. And if I do this daily, then I'm constantly improving at a massive rate because I'm keeping myself in check. I'm not keeping myself ignorant. I'm not creating resentment. I'm not creating fear or hatred or destruction because I'm leveling on a battlefield where I'm understanding not only other people, but myself as well. You know, mastering others is strength, but mastering yourself is true power. Now, to be able to be completely transparent and have your own voice and not care about what other people think, constantly trying to be able to express yourself and being true in that, that's powerful. And you can hear Bruce Lee say that, okay? Bruce Lee, somebody I admire, man. So many people will not be able to improve upon some standards that they have. And once you can become aligned with this acronym that I came up with called EAT UP, it's essentially deploying empathy, awareness, and transparency to be able to create unity through positivity. You got to eat up all the good stuff. And then you're going to be fulfilled and not have the world come and interrupt your days because you're being truthful in each and every way and you don't have to lie about other people you don't have to prove yourself or your worth if they say something bad to you then you're in acceptance of it sure you know I can understand you know I'm sorry you feel that way I can only imagine how you must feel other people will try and poke you don't let them or you can let them and dismiss them just like that deflecting on offense not playing defense and continuing to progress in who you are caring enough about what other people think to answer their questions and their concerns but also not caring so that you're focused on your own self and your improvement because other people are trying to drag you down you got to stay on your own moral grounds you got to understand what your values are who you are your purpose, your why, and then you can focus on this is what I'm going to do because I know who I am and this is who I want to become. This is what the result is. How is going to be the progression of that? Now, great philosophers like Aristotle and Plato, they have so many ideas that we use even today, right? They invest in themselves in the why. However, they didn't build a massive empire. The Romans built an empire. And what the Romans did differently was they started to ask how. So they went through that process of being able to build an empire because they structured themselves 
and they didn't just philosophically talk about theory or purpose. They actually did something about it. So when you take action on your beliefs, when you have faith in that desire, you create definite goals and ambitions to be able to achieve that, then you're going to be able to reach that result. Who I want to be, how I want to serve, what that's going to look like. It all starts with asking questions. Why? Why, 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 why? If you live like that, the world is going to open up to you and you're just going to start pouring with solutions. But do not keep yourself at a place where you're trying to please other people. Just focus on doing you actualizing your talents, your gifts, your potential, and staying true, and then you can be able to serve people at your best. Listen to what other people say when you know their advice is coming from the right place, but don't go out of your way to listen to everybody because they are trying to impress upon you and prove to you why their feedback is worthy of you hearing. And if it's the wrong person that you're listening to and you allow into your mind, you're going to end up screwing with your own time, your own integrity, your own moral components of the data that makes up who you are, and you're going to violate your integrity trying to please this other person who you allowed into your mind. Guard the gates that defend everything you create. And then the whole world will come to you at your doorstep because you live in truth. I hope that proves so valuable to you in so many ways. I appreciate each and every one of you that are here today. Thanks for stopping by, Gwen. You're my biggest fan. I love you. Have a blessed day. Namaste. I'll talk to you later. <sighs> All right. Thanks for hopping on my awareness documentation of 23 minutes of epic. I hope you enjoyed how to be able to live happy because it's living in truth and it's what I'll be talking about for the rest of my life. The Bible is a huge part of that. God and Jesus believing in that faith is going to help you create. Follow that truth and the alignment, the talents you got and go out and give.